Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Adobe plugin tutorial. In this one, I'm going to be showing you important build settings in order to build your plugin properly on Mac and Windows. And we'll be going over uh, all the debug, release, and Visual Studio, as well as Xcode examples. Before we get started with this video, I do want to remind you down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly in the channel. And down in the description, you can check out the uh, important build settings link in the description in the GitHub link. You can follow us there for coding updates and in the description, follow us on Instagram for other live updates. If you're not already a member of the Discord server, you can come and join and get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, submit tutorial ideas, and hang out with some of our awesome members. And if you'd like to become a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP, which comes with cool perks and helps us out financially on YouTube, link for that is in the description. And starting this month, uh, all these perks will be given every single week consistently as I have uh, gotten ahead of schedule and am able to do that. So if you've ever wanted to support the channel, now is your chance, link in the description. All right, so let's start with the Windows important settings. I have them all listed here that I'm going to be going over, so we might as well just use this list and I'll go ahead and put this over here. The first thing we wanna make sure we have set up is a proper build directory. If you haven't already set up your build directory, you can go uh, to the properties of your, your project and in configuration properties general, your output directory should be set to uh, $AE plugin build directory. Now, if you don't already have the environment variable set up for this, you might want to do that. In order to do that on Windows, of course, you can go to uh, edit your system environment variables and go to environment variables. And as you can see here, I have a user variable called AE plugin build directory. And this value simply links to my media core plugins build folder. That's something very important, of course, that you want to make sure you have set up the first time you're setting up plugins. Next is if you're actually debugging your plugin, you want to make sure in the debugging settings, uh, you have your command not set to target path, but if you edit or browse, you can choose an application to debug with. This is where you'll want to go into your uh, main hard drive, Adobe, After Effects, or Premiere. And once you now launch the debug, this command will also be launched, which launches After Effects and allows us to debug with that program. Next is a setting that will disable a lot of errors that can come up, and that is to go down to our C and C++ area, and then the General tab, we want to say treat warnings as errors to no. If you want to be really, really strict and make sure every single little thing is perfect in your code, you can keep this to yes, but sometimes this will cause unnecessary errors when you just load example projects. Next is also under C and C++, and we're going to go to code generation. And under the struct member alignment, if this isn't set to anything, you can just leave it. But many times for say, for example, in the release version, it will be set to like four byte or something like that. This can cause issues when building your plugin. So set this to default if you're having any issues there. And lastly, if you are using additional libraries, you wanna make sure you have them included by going into uh, input and additional dependencies. You can see there's quite a few already included already, but if you have say, for example, CUDA or some kind of external library, you want to put in the entire path to this here uh, in order to include that library. All right, so that was all the recommended build settings and helpful things for Windows on Visual Studio. Now let's look at Xcode with Mac. I have the same SDK noise project loaded up here. And the first thing we wanna make sure is that we're wrapping this uh, deliverable basically as a plugin. By default, a lot of projects are set to bundle. So if I click on my project here and I'll go ahead and go into my project settings build settings and we'll type in packaging under here is where our wrapper extension is our wrapper extension is going to usually sometimes by default be set to bundle and you'll notice you'll compile your final deliverable to a dot bundle file but we can simply change this to plugin and that will make sure our deliverable plugin file is in the proper format now if we go to uh, our target of our actual plugin here under general, there's a lot of useful settings in here. The main one is our bundle identifier. You always wanna make sure you have a unique identifier, usually starting with com.adobe or com.yourcompany name, and then the name of your product. And this will help identify this unique application or plugin as it's used on other computers, and will also be helpful in the future when you're packaging this up or code signing it. 
Now, if we go into the info tab under targets, we have a lot of useful information as well. Um, for example, we can change the name of our bundle. We can create an OS type code for it. We can change the name of the executable file. We can add a little copyright thing and uh, lots of simple settings to help set up the name of our plugin. I'm going over a lot of these more simple features because when I was first using Xcode, it did take a lot of searching to find a lot of these uh, properties and naming things. And also we want to look at code signing. Under signing and capabilities in our target section, you can code sign as uh, an Apple developer. Is uh, Actually, you want to use the developer ID application specifically. Um, and then you can also use your identifier here that you created earlier. This is important when, in the future when you want to deliver this to customers on different computers. And Macs have the highest security now, which requires code signing. In the project settings, I believe there are signing options as well. If you type in signing, there's a signing section where we can also choose our development team and all of our code signing options. And lastly, something more recent is building versus archiving. Um, a lot of times, if you're just building a simple plugin uh, for older versions of After Effects, you can simply start the build process and build your plugin, which gets uh, spit out into an output folder. But there's also the option to go to product archive, which is more commonly now, in my experience, used for newer things like uh, making it compatible with an M1 or Apple Silicon Mac. And uh, archiving will basically create its own unique folder with this output. And with archiving, it just seems to work better with more modern builds and modern systems. So I would highly recommend switching over to archiving instead of uh, just building with the play button. Because with archiving, you actually create something more accepted and secure according to uh, Apple Gatekeeper. And that's actually it for this video, guys. Those are important build settings for both Windows and Mac when making plugins. Uh, one last thing is to remind you to make sure you do this on Windows in the debug and release versions. Uh, and if you have those on Mac as well, make sure you configure it for that. If you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly in the channel. And down in the description of this video, you can check out the tips and code for this in the GitHub link. Follow us there for coding updates and in the description, follow us on Instagram for other live updates. If you're not already a member of the Discord server, you can come and join and get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, submit tutorial ideas, and much more. Hang out with a lot of these really smart people who ask questions and help answer other questions. And if you'd like to help support us on YouTube, you can become a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP, get cool perks, and help us out financially. Link for that is in the description. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.